Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for frame rate is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Frame Rate is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. With over 1 million high quality video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use offer code FRAMERATE7. He clobbers them off as Black Belt Jones. I lost three of my best men in there. Now I'm asking you as a favor. You're asking me to be the fourth. Get a couple tanks and blast it down. Forget it, man. I ain't going in there. It's a fortress. Well, fortress or no, it's top priority. Go, so go, 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 go! <laughs> It's frame rate. See what I did there? That was me oh talking. Oh my gosh. Episode 130 of Frame Rate. Brian Brushwood can talk over the music. Finally! Go, 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 go. Hey guys, I'm Brian Brushwood. I'm Tom Merritt. Welcome to Frame this Rate. This is Frame Rate. We had uh, a little inside sauce. We said that at the same time. Yeah, we, we, we can interrupt each other now because Brian <laughs> got a little <laughs> Skype ducking thing going on. Awesome. Yeah, we're the, this is the first episode in all of Twit where we're trying a uh, a multiple Skype solution at the same time. Hopefully, it'll allow us to interrupt each other in order to make more fractious well, and Brian, angry I'm episodes. Not sure. That's such a See? good idea. Oh, That's oh. exactly what I'm saying. Well, well put, Tom. Wait, which direction are you? Yeah, here That's, we go. I'm over here. Yeah. High five over all this. Right. Whatever. Hey, man, uh, yes. that opening clip was in memoriam for Jim the Dragon Kelly, star of Black Belt Jones, died today at age 67. Uh, man, kind of sucks to be a grown-up. And then all of a sudden, all the people you were chuckling at when you were a teenager are, are passing away. So uh, condolences to the family and fans of Black Belt yeah. Jones. Go find, a, go find a, a Jones movie. Dig it up. Enjoy it in his honor. Yeah. Let's kick it off with the big story. This just in, the big story. Well, guess who has cold feet? Uh, Intel got a brand new CEO recently, Brian Kurzanich, and uh, now he's saying things like, about Intel TV, we believe we have a great user interface and the compression, decompression technology is fantastic. And you may be saying, well, of course he's saying that, Tom, he's the CEO of Intel, but he goes on to say, but in the end, if we want to provide that service, it comes down to content. We are not big content players. So is this is this them pretty much acknowledging like, hey, the reason nobody else has cracked this? Uh, pretty sure that's the reason we're not going to be able to crack this either. Because yeah. like being content cautious. is hard. We're experts in silicon. We're experts in mobility and driving Moore's Law. But we are not experts in the content industry and we're being careful. Because Anich now, came in and said, well, let me see the numbers on the Intel TV project. Yeah, say what? You got no deal? No, zero deals. And we're launching it. Uh, I don't know about this, guys. Well, but but keep in mind that that we had an earlier discussion said that this might be the reason that they're perfectly positioned to come in is because they don't have a dog in the fight. They don't have any kind of conflict because they're pushing their own player with their own media partners or whatever. They could have come in as the third party. But my guess is uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all if at this point every everything was just so fractious and everybody was so worried about their exclusives and their partnerships and their diluted fantasies of what they think they can get out of an imaginary pie, then nobody wants to actually make a legitimate deal with anyone, which would really bum me out because Yeah, in fact, uh, Shara Tipkin over at CNET has, a, uh, has an article up that says, while Intel's been testing the product for months, it still faces hurdles. One of those is content deals. Time Warner Cable and other cable TV providers have been pressuring channel owners to shun packs with Intel and other internet-based TV providers. So in other words, what I think is happening is the previous CEO, Paul Odellini, was a big fan of it and was like, no, come on, you guys, we can do it. I know it's going to be hard. Let's strike these deals. Krasanich comes in and says, 
I'm not a big believer that this is the business we need to be in. I think we need to be talking about maybe doing some de chip design for Apple, coming up with some more mobile processors. Wearable computing seems hot. We're good at that. I'm not sure why we're doing this. And that's what a lot of people were questioning Intel about. So, yeah, like you Can said, I, I kind of thought, well, Intel might be awesome because they don't have the dog in the fight. But it turns out not having a dog means that nobody wants to come to your dog park. Yeah, uh, here's the thing. I, I, I'm i going to kick myself for having said this out loud, but I actually think this guy is making the right call. Like, like from the outside, I'm cheering the idea of Intel coming in as, as yes. a rambunctious third party and stirring stuff up. But truthfully, if I was CEO and I'm looking at my own core competencies, I would not I would not go in the direction <laughs> we thought they were going. And to be honest, I think that they're smart to do, you know, to, 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 to focus on what they're good at and what their name has been for, you know, 40 years or where, however I hate, long. So I hate to agree vociferously with you all the time because we know that could make a boring show, but I can't disagree with you there. As a, as a customer, yeah, I'm not writing the checks. I'm not a shareholder. Go Intel, get in there. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll be able to do it. As a CEO Who who's like, maybe, maybe is not good enough for me. Yeah. Uh, and like, this is hey, not something uh, that we do. It's it's as though he's like, hey guys, uh, you know what we're really good at is uh, playing chess. Uh, this whole plan of like getting into pro wrestling, I'm not real sure that it's a good idea because we're not strong. I, yeah. I can do a push up or three, but uh, really, do, let's focus on our our queen's bishops openings and not so much uh, stop sewing that spandex costume and and yeah. you stop playing '80s rock. And just this to be clear. They haven't announced they're not doing the Intel TV. With the, he's sure. just saying he's just saying cautious things instead of enthusiastic things. They may still come out with it. Uh, so I don't I don't want to give the misconception that they've killed well, it. They're and far, again, far as a it. consumer, I hope they do, man. I hope they I hope yeah, they do, tear do. stuff up, man. But uh, but uh, but also not going to be mad at him as a CEO if he doesn't go for it. No, it's totally understandable. Uh, speaking of getting Brian mad, though, that's another big story. Oh my God. Stop everything. It's another big story. So, Tom, 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 yeah, I want you to picture something. I want you to okay. picture something. Right. It's uh, it's like last week on Tuesday or so. I, or, when, or Thursday. I forget when. Thursday, but Thursday. Uh, it's time for me time for me to take care of bills. And I noticed <sighs> that, like, I missed last month's cable bill, right? So I'm okay. like, oh, that means I'll have to pay two months. So how much will that be? So I, I pick up the phone, dial the number. Robot says, oh, you want to pay your bill? That'll be 400 Fifty-five dollars <gasps> and How is that seventy-two too much? cents. Well, that's what I said because it's like, like, hey, man, like it's always been like one hundred and fifty bucks. Why is it suddenly four hundred and forty something dollars? So to clarify, pick up the phone. Let me let me talk to a person. Uh, hello, this is Brian. I'm a customer. Uh, why am I paying two hundred and twenty plus dollars a month? And they're like, oh, well, this fee went up and that fee went up, and you're paying thirteen dollars a month now for your DVR or whatever. Uh, and I just hear all of this stuff. And, and keep in mind, Time Warner, and this is me talking about my personal experience with the company, has a long track record of saying things will be one way and then charging for them another way. You know, I was told originally that uh, they're very sorry that they screwed up my installation, that they didn't show up when they would. I wasted three days. So they said, we're giving you the DV, uh, DVR for free. Normally, that's 10 bucks, but you're going to get it for free. Then they went on to charge me for months and months and sure. months. Uh, sure. Likewise, uh, you know, so in this case, they start uh, they start running down the list of all the fees that they're going to ding me on this and ding me on that. And I just something broke inside of me, Tom. And I was you like, snapped. This is the moment. I'm done. I'm out. And I said, uh, you know what? Uh, what, what, what? What would it look like if I canceled cable? And then they're like, uh, they're like, well, why would you want to do that? Well, and I thought that it would was look like a dumb move. That's what they said. <laughs> <laughs> that pretty much, right? So, so I'm like, well, let's just just hear me out. Crazy talk. What would it look like without it? And they're like, well, uh, you know, what would you do instead of cable? They were always like answering your question with a question. At some uh -huh. point, they shifted to retention mode. And the more, uh, what's you know, the the Grand Moff Tarkin, the more the tighter their grip, the more star systems slip through their fingers. <laughs> Something about them going into retention oh, mode oh, and oh, arguing the power with of cable. Me. Yes, exactly. And I'm just like, well, I'll do Netflix and Hulu. And they're like, oh, well, you know, they can just change. They could change their prices anytime you want, at least with us. You have a guaranteed <laughs> price. I was Plus, like, I why thought do they so. Need to know? Why is it any of, any of their business? 
whether yeah. what other services you're going to use. Yeah. So at some point, the cold fire of hate comes over me, and I full on decide this is it, man. I host Frame Rate with Tom Merritt. I'm, I'm going to cut the cord. I'm so pissed right. at these asshats that it's like it's over now. So I say, I say, dude, let's let's. I I I want to I want to. I want to do this. So they start challenging me like, well, what, are, how are you going to watch your shows outside of that? And, uh, and, uh, and, you know, I mentioned the, the alternatives and they try to tell me why those are bad. Uh, and, um, then they're like, well, hold on, let me see what I can do. And they come back and they say, all right, we can drop you from $220 down to 151. Now keep in mind, if you did drop cable, you would be at 154. So just internet and phone would be like 154. We're going to be cheaper than that at 151. And you get to keep everything the same. And at this point, I had made the mistake or the brilliant move of tweeting out my intention to cut the cord. So all of the internet is cheering like, no, screw those guys. Cut the cord, Brian. Cut, go. The, cord. cut the cord. Cut exactly. the cord. Exactly. So at That's this point... They're offering me $3 cheaper to keep everything that I have. So I'm like, no, I don't think I'm going to do that. They're like, hold on. Let me see what I can do. And they go off on hold again. Then they come back. And at this point, we're at 45, 50 you. minutes. Hold on. Exactly. I'm write down a number. Yeah. Then they say, no. okay, if you do cable or if you do internet and phone, that's going to be $154. But if you just keep basic cable, you don't even have to use it. Just keep it. Just plug in that coax to the back of your television. Get your free 20 whatever channels. Who cares? It'll be $138. <laughs> and I'm like, so at this point, Same. at this point, they're proposing to me to pay me $16 a month or so to please just keep at least basic cable. But at this point, I'm principal, and I'm just like, uh, nope, let's cancel cable and go. And it ended up, that that uh, that we totally and it, it took ninety minutes and they ended up uh, disconnecting my internet in the process and I had to call back I got <sighs> dropped off and all this other crap or whatever uh, but but where I am now is one hundred and thirty eight dollars a month it's only phone and and an increased tier of I went in and got the maximum package for uh, for internet at this point so uh, at this point I've totally cut the cord but here's the important part is uh, number one, I expect lots of griping from me in the future. Uh, but like doing the math, like I'm saving $80 a month, which means that's an astonishing amount of content that I can buy on iTunes at full oh, yeah. retail. Uh, but I, I don't know that I could possibly spend $80 a month and 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 end up on the wrong side of profitability on this. Like your I think only, your only issues, and this this is actually great because we've always argued that one of the reasons we both haven't fully cut the cord is that we need to keep an eye on what's going on. I, I will continue to keep an eye on what's going on when you have a service. I have Direct TV. That's fine. But what's going to be interesting is how frustrating the timing issue is because you yeah. you're definitely making financial sense. No doubt about it. And you're definitely exposing what's going on with those cable subscriber numbers where they're like, look, we don't care about making money off you anymore. We need to make sure that our shareholders see subscriber numbers are not declining or that at right. least we can explain them away by the economy that only the poorest people who would who couldn't afford to have the service at all uh, are, go are going to cut the cord. So it'll be interesting to see, can you find enough satisfaction in buying movies and TV shows and not being able to see things on time. And keep in mind also, like, uh, e even though I'm legitimately cutting the cord now and I'm finally doing the thing that both of us have said we wanted to do for a long time, uh, there's some part of me that still feels like I'm fudging because it's like I'm thinking in the back of my head, well, you know, mom and dad, they got they got direct TV and they got that's HBO. That's legit. So anybody's like, got, go anybody's got, you know, friends or family that they can go talk to. Hang out with. That's fair enough. Well, let me do this. So here's here's the thing. I suspect that if you guys are anything like Tom and I, there's a lot of you guys who will listen to the show who want to be able to cut the cord, but you got some reason or other to, to hold back for a little while. I'm going to set up the frame rate chicken challenge. And what I want you guys to do, because it was, it was really, really fun to mess with them and just say the words, uh, I don't see the point of cable. I want to cancel cable and just watch all my stuff on the internet and watch them freak out and scramble. Now, here's here's the ch chicken challenge is pick up the phone, call your provider and just say and you've got to specifically say, hey, man, I'm realizing I watch all my stuff online. So uh, I'd like to cancel cable. 
Just say those words. The worst thing that could happen is they say, okay, no problem, done. And they're like, oh, you know what? I just remembered there's this big game next week I want to see. Let me hold off on that and then take it back. There's no penalty. But what will happen is I want you to, first of all, evaluate how argumentative they are with you. Second of all, I want you to um, uh, see how much of a better deal they instantly offer. Do you realize, like, I could have, if I had taken the first or second offer, saved 80 like like eighty dollars and essentially gotten the exact same thing just for saying the words. I don't see the point of cable, and yeah. and so here's what I want everybody at home to do. That I want to make this a, a, a like a like a wave. Like if you're a true frame rate fan, at least flirt with the idea. Pick up the phone and call. And in fact, Tom, I'd kind of like you to uh, wait. Wait, we talked about this though because I called you. I was all excited, and you said there was a reason you couldn't take the chicken challenge. No, because I'm on a contract. I'm on a direct TV contract. So. I, I, I see, can't, can't. I, see what happens. It's not the same calculus. Let's put it that way. So here's what I told Brian is that once my year long movers advantage contract is over, uh, which will be next January, I will, I will definitely hop on board this, but it's not, not the same test to be like, well, sir, you're going to have to pay this early termination fee. Cause they, then they've got leverage over you. Right. Yeah. Maybe it's they, not going to be the same motivation on their part. I don't know, though. I would at least try it and at least threaten like you would pay the early termination fee because then at least you get a true measure of yeah, how true. much they value that subscriber count. Because what if what if the other, they really I, don't the other, care about the termination fee? All they care about is like they're so passionate about the subscriber numbers that they fall over themselves. The thing about DirecTV, though, is I have to say since Fox sold them, since News Corp sold them, they've actually been really good when I've canceled things. Like when I canceled HBO or when I got rid of my second screen, I got rid of the second DVR and just went with the main one, the one main screen, you know, they right. definitely said, oh, are you sure you want to do that? You know, why are you doing it? And I would explain. They're like, well, are you sure you want? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. OK. Like they, well, I'll they, tell you haven't, what. they haven't pushed back. Maybe well, maybe that's the difference. Maybe. I mean, and first of all, to be perfectly fair for anyone who listens, who works at Time Warner Cable, maybe I got just a bad person or maybe institutionally no, no, Time no. Warner Cable I think the cable companies are much more afraid than the satellite companies. Uh, I think uh, you'll get an entire. They're they're much less customer oriented. They're much more shareholder oriented. Directv and Dish always get rave reviews for service and for for treating their customers with respect. Time Warner Cable, no. Comcast, no. Cablevision Charter, uh uh. So I think that that it's a different issue with with the cable companies where they're like, really, all we need to do is make sure that that cord doesn't come unplugged from that television, do whatever, because all we care about is that shareholder report. So you need to make that happen because that's what that's what happened with you. They're like, well, listen, yep. we'll pay you to keep it, essentially. No, and, and essentially that was it. They essentially said uh, we would pay you to to keep the service. And uh, so I, so I, I, I think let's let's not get bogged down in what I'm going to do. Let's let's just make a clear message that you need to threaten to cut the cord, pull out your big scissors, take the chicken challenge. Don't, uh, yeah, and, but here's the thing. Don't say pays. I'm thinking about cutting the cord. Don't say I kind of want to. Call them up and say, uh, I don't see the point of cable. I want to watch all my content from Netflix and Hulu. I'd like to cancel cable, but keep, but up my, or even say up my internet or whatever. Uh, it just, just see what happens. Cancel. Yes. No. That, in fact, I would love to keep track of how much money we save all of our fans. How many people cut like like write us at uh, fr at twit.tv or frame rate at twit.tv and let us know what better offer you got. Because I was astonished. They were ready to lock in a savings of $80 per month for an entire year just to keep me on their on their cable tent. And the other the other side of that, by the way, is that they they hope in a year that you'll forget. And then they, they yes. can do what they've been doing to you, which is add a bunch of fees back in uh, and start making that money back. Uh, side notes here. Uh, you, you're excited about the Xbox 360 Time Warner cable app? Ooh, I oh, I mean, my Xbox. God. Uh, you realize, right. Tom, right. it's like if I <laughs> – this is exactly how it would go when Brian cuts the cord. Is the second he would cut the cord, there would be an awesome announcement on the service that he was stuck on with the exact uh, favorite of his consoles in the living room – that would allow because my kids. Here's the funny part: is I thought my kids would freak out about losing cable. They don't even care. The kids are watching. Bon, uh, Penny is watching all of these uh, shows on uh, these uh, Disney sitcoms that are on Netflix right now. 
They, they didn't even notice or care, although it would have been convenient for them to be able to stay in the Xbox ecosystem and watch live TV. That would have been fun to check out, but I won't be a part of that. But I am bummed. Well, and Time Warner may get sold, apparently. John C. Malone of Liberty Media is leading an effort. He's a, he's a part owner in Charter to make a bid for Time Warner Cable. And if they, if, if, if they hear that they've lost you, that may lower the share price. You know what? That's okay, a good I point. Yeah. I, 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 I express no regrets. Sorry, share price. Take the you challenge. Got, you got schwooded. That's the key here. It pays <laughs> to cancel. Take the challenge. God, I, you, you have no idea, Tom. Like, part of me wants to invent a time machine right now just so I could jump a week into the future just to read all the stories we're going to get from people I who took wait. the frame rate chicken challenge. I, I can't wait. I can't wait. Ye Let's move on to yet another ghost. Tuck in your bootstraps. It's yet another big story. Uh, this is uh, very shortly uh, here. Uh, the four-year consideration ads are starting to mount up, and we are seeing Netflix with House of Cards and Arrested Development, mostly House of Cards, pushing for Emmy nominations. Uh, Lily Hammer did get nominated last year, but this this is the first time that you look at one and go, House of Cards could win. That's that's an all-star cast. That's a great director. It's a great production. You know, like this this is a serious contender. It's not a lock by any stretch. And they've got all these odds in the paid content article. I guess the current handicap for House of Cards winning an Emmy is at 14 to 1. Homeland is at 12 to 5. So they're kind of the odds on favorite. Uh, but there's also, uh, who is it Who is it from House of Cards? Kate Mara is going to be presenting. So they're embracing this digital only, web only television so show. Let me ask you this, Tom. Do you think that, uh, you know, the cliche is it's an honor even to be nominated, right? So on the one right. hand, part of me wants to say uh, what House of Cards seeks is legitimacy for Netflix as a distribution platform. And the mere fact that it's been nominated under multiple categories gives it that legitimacy. But so even if it doesn't win, maybe that's, you know, that's a win for Netflix. But you said Lily Hammer did get nominated last year. So is this a case where Lily Hammer didn't count because it was just the one, but now the fact that it really got nominated under multiple categories and it has a credible chance of winning is enough for credibility? Or is it the case where nothing short of winning an actual Emmy will legitimize the distribution platform of Netflix as for yeah, television? I, I, th I think the difference here is Lily Hammer got garnered a nomination and that was nice but it was produced by a norwegian television network for norwegian television so you could right. make the argument if you were a naysayer that oh sure they showed it on netflix in the u.s but this was still a television network production let's let's be clear with house of cards there's none of that this was made bought and paid for by netflix they weren't the production company, but neither is HBO for any of their shows. They went to the producers and said, you're making this for us and us alone. Uh, and and that is the big difference, I think. So so you think like already full stop, the mere fact that it's been nominated is that's all the legitimacy it takes. The mere well, fact it hasn't that, that, been nominated that it's a player. Yet. It hasn't well, been nominated yet. OK, but it is I mean, like is there any get nominations? And so that's when it yeah. will be the big thing. Did you see this story about uh, people putting out uh, campaign uh, campaign posters on their yards for House of Cards, like like They're in the vein of free Netflix in exchange for putting four year consideration posters. Well, that that is an interesting internet story because the reason that, that they're doing that now is the the newspapers like Variety aren't getting the circulation they used to, and so just well, putting yeah. them in the, in the trades isn't enough. Yeah, well, and plus also, I thought it was very, uh, very in keeping with the theme. You know, of course, House of Cards being a backstabbing political extravaganza. Uh, you know, narrative, the fact that it would it, it use the trappings of real life political oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. voting, no, I thought was I thought was really cool. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, move on to probably not such a big story, but it, it's our fourth. Big story. It's Actually, it's appropriate because YouTube has put up a funny video educating you on copyright starring Fred Von Lohman, former lawyer for the Electronic Frontier Foundation, now the head of copyright for Google, uh, and they use puppets. This is so much more entertaining than that stupid cartoon they make you watch when you get three strikes or when you get, a, I guess, even a single strike. And it includes an actual respectful treatment of fair use as commentary to demonstrate, we are going to make fair use of showing you that section of the video. Take it away, Check Jason. it out. 
David, I want to take down the video that is making fun of me. Mario, you can't go around censoring people who are commenting on or criticizing your video. Copyright law leaves room for commentary, criticism, parody, and other transformative uses. You can get in a lot of trouble for ignoring that. Wait a minute, what are you doing? This is great stuff. I am putting it in the video. And that, it's, a, it's a running theme throughout the thing is that the, the puppets are making a video about copyright for YouTube. Uh, and I, I right. think they end up doing a, a, a great job. So the and most I love significant... the fact that they give like a real explanation of fair use in there. Yeah, well, and, and if you ever saw the, 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 the one that was made by, what was it, Mondo Media, the folks who, who do uh, Happy Tree Friends were the ones who did the previous video. And the whole thing was, was just a bunch of thou shalt nots and then like, well, when can we use someone's stuff? And it's like, well, that's fair use. And it, and it just in this very offhanded, offensive way to me, it just is like, yeah, but fair use is like uh, complicated legal mumbo jumbo. You don't want to worry about that. Just, just, just never use anyone's stuff ever. And of course, in a remix culture, that's not terribly fair. Uh, the fact that they spent of this five minute video, a full minute defend not only explaining fair use uh you know to remix or to comment or to criticize a video but also to uh actively defend it like in that moment you just saw somebody's like i want to take down a video because it uses a second of my thing and i don't like what he says about it and the fact that youtube's lawyer says uh no bro that's covered and there's nothing you're gonna do that is a tremendous advance forward uh not not as far as i would like to see i think that uh, in reality we live in a far greater uh, remix culture than um, uh, than is represented in this video. But to go from zero to as far as they have, it's a big move on YouTube's part, and I certainly applaud it. Let's take a break and thank our sponsor for today's show. This episode of Frame Rate brought to you by Shutterstock.com. Speaking of fair use, you can make fair use of a lot of things. But if something you can't make fair use of is somebody else's photograph without the permission in some kind of promotional context for you, right? You're making a brochure yeah. or you're making no, a yeah. movie. Uh, you can't, you can't so, say it's fair use when you're making an ad. Like, like if you want to sell something and use their, yeah. somebody else's photograph or this time lapse of birds chirping and, and flowers opening or whatever, throw that in there and be all like, you know, achieve bliss with my awesome But Brian, new but Brian, but Brian, if I want some nice footage video for my advertisement or my company presentation and, and there's, there's something I can use and I can't make a fair use case for it, I got to pay millions of dollars for that, right? Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe that's how it was back in, uh, the 1960s, 50s. I'm not sure where you're phoning in from, but, uh, nowadays super cheap and available thanks to Shutterstock. They add like tens of thousands of images every week, maybe even every day. Here's a puppet Men you're looking at right now. Wait, so, so wait, I, so I could make my own puppet video without needing to know puppetry, no. operate puppets. Or even have the puppets. Or get sued by some puppet company. No, you don't have to get you don't have to get sued or nothing. You just go to Shutterstock. Here's the best part: we are going to hook you up with a code, Tom, what? so you can get thirty percent off. Thirty percent off if you use promo code Frame Rate Seven for your purchases. Well, I, hold on, I'm I want to try it out first, though. I, if I try it out, you're gonna you're gonna take all my credit card information and stuff, right? No, just, come on, man. What do you take me for? This ain't no back alley stabbing. I'm not I'm not shiving you and stealing your wallet. I'm trying to provide value, my friend. Do you realize, Tom, that if you buy a billion dollars worth of stock photos, you would save $300 million just by using promo code FRAMERATE7? You ever see a little movie called Brewster's Millions, Tom? Yes. He couldn't barely spend $30 million in a month. Imagine how long it would take you to spend that $300 million you'll save with promo code FRAMERATE7. So free, so all I do is I sign up for a free account. I create a clip box and share some videos. And then if I want to buy any of them, I, I choose my most convenient package to get 30% off with the code FRAMERATE7. That's what you're telling me. That's I think that's literally, I think you just did a non-fair use plagiarism of my exact words. But I'm going to forgive it, Tom, because- You're going to license that friends to me? Over Thank you. Yeah. Yes, and I'm going to use Shutterstock to sell it to you. Awesome. Thank you, Shutterstock, for supporting Frame Rate. You are the best. We love you, and we're going to send you flowers. Time for the slipstream. I'm, I almost sounded insincere when I said that. I'm seriously going to send them flowers now. 
Let's start <laughs> with Ario, the CEO, talking up uh, his tech, taking a taking a tour. We're not talking about Barry Diller. We're talking about Chet Konoja. He doesn't get enough credit. He's the actual CEO of this company. He's just Barry Diller backed, uh, showing the micro antennas around and saying, oh, and by the way, yeah, you know we're in New York. You know we're in Atlanta. We're coming to Chicago in September, September 13th. We are not stopping. We are Ario. Can I tell you my favorite quote from this entire article was the, the, the question is, is somebody says um, uh, some people believe that uh, Aereo is may is built to circumvent the legal system. And he says, let me state uh, flatly, Aereo was built to comply with the legal system. And I think that's what I really love about it is that he put it in a black and white context and says, uh, these are the rules you assholes have set up. And we're obeying them to the law. I, I, I don't know if you're going to bleep that or not. I apologize for uh, not an exact quote. I should point that out. Okay, that's so. so but we. <laughs> but I bet he. I bet he wanted to say that. I'm almost certain I he bet, did. I bet he did. That's I what bet. was in his heart. <laughs> that's that. That's how he feels. He says, "I find it hard to believe that there are lawmakers in this country that will sit idle and have fifty plus million people disenfranchised by not allowing them to have antenna." Which is it's pretty much the same thing I said. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. like I pretty much verbatim, like like if this was YouTube, I would get a takedown notice for having quoted him too exactly. He says. The system is set up so that nobody cares about these customers. It's purely about creating more and more profit for the companies. It may be right for them, but it creates an opportunity for people like me who say, if I pick that consumer and support him to the nth degree, I'll win. In other words, guess who usually wins in the end is the company that supports the customer. We, we like to think that's not true because we always see so many companies succeeding at abusing the company customer, but they don't win in the end. They always end up getting their just desserts. And it sometimes it takes a long time. But but those companies don't have long term success. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you what, man. I, I continue from the sidelines in a pro wrestling context. Uh, I can't get enough of the Aereo story, and I love the fact that they're that they're using the the letter of the law as a hammer uh, to those who want to shut down people's ability to get what they want when they want on what device they want in a legal way. Now, in comparison, uh, we have Reuters. Reporting on an interview with John Hendricks, he's the uh, uh, boss of HBO Go. I'm sorry, he's the boss, of the, not a boss of HBO Go. He's the boss of Discovery Communications. But he's talking about the success of services like HBO Go and saying Discovery would like to do a service like that. And in his memoir, he floats the idea of a price of six to eight dollars for a Discovery service like that. And I'm starting to cheer, right? I'm like, awesome! So I could just go right to the internet. Pay eight dollars. Sure, I'll pay eight dollars. Sure, month, bro. Six to eight dollars. That's that's discoveries. right in line with I'll your Netflix. The, and he said, yeah. "Now wait, now wait a minute." He says, "Hold on, it's only going to be things that are between six and eighteen months old because we're going to keep the six month stuff running on the Discovery Live channel, and the stuff that's over eighteen months gets licensed out to places like Netflix." So now, like, oh, also, okay, maybe the, I'm maybe I'm maybe I'm into Shark Week enough that I'll pay eight dollars. But that's not all. He also says you're going to have to be paying for cable to that's, authorize that's yourself. That's the big moment. That pay the, us so, the eight dollars. So the the not only the six to eight dollars to get the content, but that's on top of the as we just discussed the eighty plus dollars they have to pay just to get in the basic cable club uh, to begin with. It's uh, it's ridiculous. It's a step in the wrong direction. Uh, it's it's a right headed uh, effort in a wrong-headed uh, packaging. How about that? Yeah. It's like you've got you've got the pieces, right? You could either put up an app and require people to authenticate to get the app. That's perfectly normal. Lots of companies are doing that now. You could be a little more uh, forward-thinking and say, you know what? We're going to put up our archive material for a subscription, and anybody can get it. You pay us $6 a month, you get the archive material. Okay, maybe that would work. I, I could see the logic. But saying you have to be a current cable subscriber and you have to pay us extra for the archive, content on top of that i don't see anybody doing that i, I get why they want to do it i get, even get the logic of like yeah but it's material we wouldn't be having on the channel so we're going to charge extra for it you get that you, you would you would pay for a dvd but that's just not going to fly nobody's going to pay money for that here's what's going to happen tom is right now what you're seeing is when somebody says this essentially what they're saying is we acknowledge where stuff is going and we see where 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 consumers want things to go. We see the success of an HBO Go and we get all of it. There's no possible way 
we can express support and not have our sh shareholders shiv us in the back, you know? So instead, what they do is they say these weird, mushy middle talks about like, let's do that thing and also charge a nominal fee because that's what my shareholders want to hear. What'll happen is there's going to be someone, the way the way uh, Dish is right now with their devil may care hopper attitude, their punk rock, we're in third place, we got nothing to lose attitude. There's going to be some channel that just at some point says, we're headed towards bankruptcy. Let's do a desperate bid and go straight to the internet and lose partnerships if we need to. And when they have massive success, that will be what breaks the dam and makes a sensible version of this available for more people. Yeah. EMI went DRM free first. Why? Because they're in last place. Of course, now exactly. they got bought. But, then, but still. these are the, yeah, yeah no but 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 these these are the stories that will transform this landscape for us. It's not the people who are in a position uh, to to protect their stuff because trust me, like third place, fourth place, fifth place systems, they would if they could preserve the cash they got. But when they got nothing to lose, that's when you get the real innovation in this this kind of market. I got some good news and some bad news about the ABC Live streaming app. You know, the one that was only uh, in New York City streaming good live news first. ABC television. Good news, first. good news first. Okay. Yeah, good here's news the good first. news. It's going beyond New York, Los Angeles, Dude. Chicago, San Francisco, Raleigh, Durham. Not Austin. I wish I could say that for you. But That's you, fine. all those cities are going to get access to their live streaming ABC programming now. This is great because what ABC is doing is they're taking content that they're already streaming for free over the broadcast networks and finally making it available to a convenient way that people would actually use it today. I can see no downside to this, Tom Merritt. Do you, do you want the bad news now? Oh, there's bad news. Yeah, there, there was also the bad news. I, I feel kind of bad now because you got so excited. But um, I did. I was pretty excited. You have, it sounded you like have, for a second, it sounded like you were about to say that one of the top four broadcasters was going to give people what they wanted. Uh, but they it sounds like you're about to say something else. I mean, this, they're still giving people what they want in those cities I mentioned. If they subscribe to Comcast, Cablevision, Cox, Charter, Midcontinent, or AT&T. So what you're saying is uh, for someone like... Well, for example, me, somebody who finally just cut the cord and gave yeah, the middle exactly. finger to yeah, exactly. Time Warner Cable and doesn't have a cable, just just out of luck for guys like me, huh? Yeah. Oh, I forgot Philly. It was already in Philly. Thanks, thanks for reminding me. Don't blame me. Um, so, but you're still yeah, gonna, you're gonna like, have to uh, you're gonna have to authenticate in New York and Philly now as well. I made a huge mistake. Um. Well. Sure. You know what gets me about this, actually? It's coming to Los Angeles, where Time Warner Cable is the dominant provider. Time Warner Cable won't, isn't on board. Yeah, so if, I, if, well, if when I listen to you say that, like it's like I was... AT &T. Yeah. Yeah, I was screwed regardless. Yeah. So, yeah, it's not coming to Austin, and Time Warner isn't one of the partners. So, there you go. Good enough. Uh, we've got a couple of interesting Netflix stories. First of all, if you have PS3 with Netflix, you must do this right now. Go launch Netflix and engage with Max. The virtual assistant who asks you questions about your movie habits. Let's play the rating game uh, and then recommend stuff for you to watch. Uh, you know what? I'm actually so okay with this that I was disappointed to realize that this was a PS3 only feature. Like yeah, I actually apparently went they're and, bring it to the iPad soon. Well, so. I looked I looked for a link uh, to, you know, for the PC version of this because here's yeah. the thing. Just um, type like, PS3. Netflix's algorithm is really, really good. Like it's so good. They offered a million dollars to improve it. And when they saw how tricky you would have to get to improve on it, they paid the million dollars and then didn't use it. Like that's how good the predictive algorithm is. So if there's a simple way for you to just say, you know, five, 10, but here's 20 my different. Question. Brian, how often do you sit down at Netflix and go, I wish there were a virtual assistant that could tell me something to watch? Well, no, no, no. Okay. Here's the gap. Tom is the gap I, is the gap. There, there's there's we could say like uh, uh, we could say oh yeah no 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 I hear that algorithm's really really good and uh, one of these days I'm gonna fill in all my information and it's gonna give me that magic where it just knows what I like or it could be like hop on we're gonna we're gonna dress it up a little bit it's like it's like when they bother to try to make defensive driving a comedy online course or whatever yes the comedy is crap yes as a game. Max is a crap game, but it's just enough, I hope, that no, it'll get my, you to put your information in there. But my question make, is, 
do you really like ever sit down and go like, oh, I'm at a loss. I want to watch something on Netflix, but I'm at a loss. I, I don't yep. use it that way. Nope, I you do. do. Okay. I totally All do. Right. Well, and in fact, that's why I'm I'm totally bummed that my kids have ruined. Like I spent I spent like a day. Oh, you Tom, need profiles. doing nothing. Yeah. I, I rated all my stuff because it's like, like it. there's stuff out there that I'm going to love and I don't know that I'm going to love it. And I, you, you got to go through that process to set it up. And I was bummed when my kids started watching a bunch of Disney Channel crap and it just ruined everything for me. But, uh, but yeah, no, I'm a big fan of that stuff. A uh, more minor note, uh, during Microsoft's Build Developers Conference last week, they showed off Netflix working in Windows 8.1. That's an upcoming update to Windows in HTML5. So no more Silverlight, Netflix working natively in the browser. Now, what they had to do to do this was Microsoft had to implement uh, a few modules, the media source extension, the encrypted media extension, and the web cryptography API so that Netflix's DRM would work in native HTML5 because those are not part of the HTML5 standard. But once Microsoft did that for Internet Explorer, this works great. Uh, and it means that the, you don't have to install Silverlight, update Silverlight, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to have to have Chrome, Safari, Firefox, Opera. They're all going to have to do all of that work themselves if Netflix is going to be able to use this on HTML5 across different browsers. That may or may not happen, but so, an interesting note. The, 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 the controversy, as we discussed this when it was originally proposed, was that HTML5 is an open standard. And in order to put in some kind of, like, you can't have netflix uh support without some form of drm and the whole idea of putting a proprietary drm into what's allegedly supposed to be an open standard is a problem so the workaround as i'm understanding from what you just said is that each browser kind of tweaks a little thing in there well, it's, not even, come... it's not even that bad it's there these are some commonly accepted modules that i believe i don't want to say they're open because i don't know what licenses they're under but they're not proprietary so other people can implement them but the browser right. has to implement them Right. So it's, so it's browser like the, by browser, you'll see this. Exactly. And, and that's actually true of HTML. Every browser implements HTML a little different, which is why pages don't always render exactly the same from browser to browser. Uh, right. So it's really not that unusual for a browser to be like, OK, I'm going to add in this ability to, to handle things that way. Um, that's how the Adobe Flash plugin works. It's just Netflix wants everybody to get on board with these modules. Uh, Fair and enough. Because then we could all watch the new girl in HTML5. Yeah, man. Uh, New Girl was was one of the big players uh, for the Hulu. It was, it was a big draw. I know certainly That's in my household. That's the big story here. It's, it's, it's uh, Netflix getting exclusive deal for past seasons of New Girl. Now, we don't know how many seasons New Girl is going to have. They only have one now. But yeah, Hulu did not get the old seasons of New Girl. New Girl, a Fox show. Fox, a, a part of uh, News Corp, which owns Hulu. Yeah, man. Uh, I'll tell you what. I, I, I honestly don't know how. Uh, tell me how you feel about this, because on the one hand, it's like it's great because you're seeing this. The, you're getting to the nasty part of the battle. Right. And the fact that this is a space that people are actually fighting over is good for the consumers. But on the other hand, as a consumer, I want more players. And at this point, like Hulu's looking really pretty crappy as an option for looking at a lot of this stuff. And I don't know. They don't want to quite see a dominance from Netflix. In fact, weirdly, for as long as this show's been on, Tom, I would have ranked it as Netflix, then Hulu, then Amazon Prime. But from the stories in the last couple of weeks, for the first time ever, I think I'd rank it Netflix, then Amazon Prime, then Hulu so you, right you now. liked Netflix back before it was popular, is what you're saying. Well, no, no, no. I mean, it's like we always knew that Netflix was dominant <laughs> or whatever, but it's like they're so like dominant right now. sold out, man. Yeah, now you got the you new, get girl. new girl. You got Zoe Deschanel. Hey, look I'll at me! Bust. I'm Netflix. I got so many Emmys, or I'm about to get <laughs> I'm Emmys. Uh, there's, <laughs> there's a side note here, by the way, that News Corp is splitting uh, into 20th Century Fox and News Corp. Uh, 20th Century Fox is going to be the movies and TV show side of things, and News Corp is the newspaper side. This is a, this is fallout from the scandal about the newspaper uh, uh, investigations, where they were they were breaking into people's uh, voicemail right. and in, such. In England. So when we go forward, we will be referring to 20th Century Fox, oddly enough, when talking about what we used to call News Corp owning Fox Television, et cetera, et cetera. So I believe it's I, I need to double check this, but I believe 20th Century Fox gets the ownership stake in Hulu that News Corp had because it's part of that side of the business. Man, but, but what's weird is wouldn't it make more sense for Hulu if 
if News Corp ended up owning them because then you've got somebody – then like the whole no, problem with Hulu because is that the, the News is that Corp is the newspaper business. It would make sense for the – Cut the side of the company that's probably going to go bankrupt. No, 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 no. But, but, but but that's just it. Is is part of the problem that they're having is that they're owned by by uh, you know News Corp has their vested interest in their existing um, stuff, uh, their existing agreements, and it's like uh, the, the whole reason that we thought Intel might do well is because they don't have a dog in the fight, and the whole reason that Hulu's trying to sell itself to anyone who's well, not I, entrenched I, I in old media. I, I get what you're saying, and there's an argument there, but Hulu doesn't get to choose. Yeah, right. it's the the executives at News Corp, the former News Corp, that they get to choose. So, so yeah, I, I, I just think if News Corp, the newspaper side News Corp ended up owning Hulu, it just wouldn't make any sense because you'd have a bunch of people who know absolutely nothing. At least now you have people, which is who I want. Who, who, I want, who, I want the amateurs. No, I want, P- yes. No, you don't. I have worked for a company owned by an amateur <laughs> who knew nothing about the television industry. It does not end well. Trust me. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> All right, let's I'll take your word for times. it. Uh, Sony's 4K player launching July 15th. We've talked about this before. It's the uh, player that will uh, cost you a lot of money uh, and come with Sony's 4K video unlimited service, which far from being unlimited probably doesn't have that many titles, but you will be able to rent for 24 hours, $8 a film, 4K versions of uh, TV episodes, films, and, and short form content. I'll tell you what, Tom, I've been, you've heard me, I've been bearish on the idea of 4K as a cinema standard in the home since day one, but something about the fact that it's it's an actual item and it's here and available right now kind of makes me hope that it works out. I want this to be profitable because I'd like better, higher fidelity experiences. I want 4K as a standard to be uh, valued. I want giant clear screens to be a thing. I just don't think that movies is the place for them. So I'm I'm nothing but thumbs up for Sony in this regard. And actually, you know, it's $699. It's the television that's capable of showing 4K that really is the expensive part of this. $699 is not cheap, don't get me wrong, but uh, that's all it costs to, to be like, able to what, get It's like, what, 20% of your total purchase experience or so? Right? Or maybe maybe 10% of your total I don't purchase? Know, the, the, in the TV, like $10,000 still? I mean, I mean, right now, but, but like next year, it'll be down to like four thousand. It's like this stuff drops so fast. But and of course, two tops still- all about the the devices, the hardware that we use. And a minor note here: uh, Roku streaming stick uh, FCC listing shows that it's going to get the same remote that the new Roku box got, which means you have the headphone jack in the remote control. I don't know if anyone cares, but it's kind of nifty, dude. I think that's that is the kind of subtle change that could mean an awful lot to. Especially, uh, there are still couples, uh, Bonnie and I are not one of them, but there are couples where there's a TV in the bedroom and one of them wants to watch while the other one's trying to sleep or whatever. That little thing matters in a huge, huge way. So good for them. Yeah. Let's move on to Film Vow. Uh, the BBC has been making content exclusively available for iPlayer, but uh, not in the great numbers that it's doing. It announced eight shows now, uh, most of them comedies, uh, most of them shorter form, but uh, expanding its effort, it's kind of indicating that like maybe iPlayer is the future of the BBC. Well, I, I, at some point, like these decisions don't happen in a vacuum, right? It's not like somebody sat there and says, we don't make enough content for the iPlayer uh, because I think it's a great opportunity. The only reason this happens is that somebody says, geez, do you guys realize how much, freak, how many pe- people are watching just on iPlayer? This is ridiculous. We should, we are sitting on a gold mine. We just need to monetize it. So good for them for realizing that, or at least I'm cu- hoping I'm, for that. I'm really curious to see what the BBC does because, you know, the, the licensing system in the UK is you, you buy a television, you pay a licensing fee, and that subsidizes uh, the BBC Corporation uh, through, through the government. Uh, and, and I'm probably still saying it wrong because there's like, no, it's not run by the government, et cetera, et cetera. But it is that sort of situation. It, it does, they don't have commercials. That's not how they fund themselves. It'd be interesting to see if the BBC could come up with hardware. Say, look, you know what we're going to do? You don't want to pay the TV licensing fee? Fine. You're not going to, you, you got to show that you're not doing any over the air reception, but we'll sell you a box and it has the licensing fee built into it. And then you buy right. a subscription and that's your licensing fee. Right. I, exactly. I, I, I'm curious to see that. Also, uh, Netflix already renewing Orange is the New Black. It hasn't even premiered yet. It what, premieres July 11th, I think. 
Now, do you think that this is a case of of them? Um, because it, it's a conscious decision to make this kind of move and renew something before it even comes out. Now, realistically, uh, they don't actually, for a lot of these, need to wait until it comes out. Like they have internal tracking data. They do things like they test it on all different audiences and they they get a statistically significant level. They look at the way people are perceiving the marketing and they pretty much know within a set percentage what the range of of uh, of results they'll get when something comes out. Like uh, in this case, to decide that they're going to renew it before it comes out is less a function of we really believe in this and our data says it's going to be huge, so we better get started right away. And it seems to me like it's more a ostentatious uh, way to to show support for it before it even comes out. Does that does that make I sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it does. I I don't know that they. I mean, you make it. I I know what you're saying. I don't want people to get the impression that. Uh, they don't pay any attention to how many people stream it or anything, and that doesn't matter uh, because they do. Obviously, when House of Cards uh, got renewed again, it got two years right up front. But when they they threw a third on top of that, that was a big deal to say, oh, it must have worked, right? Right. Uh, and and so they're they're. It's not like they always just throw extra seasons because their their focus groups looked well. Uh, but at the same time, I get what you're saying, which is they might have said, hey, you know what? All the trending is indicating that this is going to do well. We're pretty confident it's going to do well. And so we're confident enough. It'll be a good press release to put out if we just go ahead and authorize the second season now. And that'll drum up interest in it because people say, oh, it must be really good. I, I should probably watch and, it. And, and I guess I guess what I'm saying is that I, I don't think this is nearly as risky a proposition as it sounds like. You know, it's uh, uh, they they have a solid idea within a fixed uh margin of error that they could predictably rely on and so it's it's they're not taking a big risk by by giving it a second season but i do think that it was a smart media savvy move to do well, so well you say that Maybe even, you say that until it tanks right and that has well, happened it's rare but that's true and it, it has happened in broadcast the thing is we'll never know because Netflix doesn't publish any, and there's no Nielsen ratings right which so, which the more i think about it is brilliant on Netflix's part the fact that they they position themselves above the ratings box, which is amazing. If you asked me three years ago, if anyone uh, could achieve a dominant market position without pleasing the populace with all the, because uh, the, the whole thing is uh, social proof is extraordinarily powerful in motivating the masses. And the fact that they are rejecting it, we, they're like, we are going to say this is a hit and give you zero evidence to back that up give you zero hard numbers to make you feel like you need to be part of the herd by jumping in and going for it is really extraordinary. And I think liberating for cre creators who will later go on to work with these guys. But then sometimes being liberated to create things the way you want means that you take an already bloated movie and add 20 minutes of extra footage to it. Which uh, if only you get give totally me one example of this. Related on give, a totally unrelated story. Uh, I, I'm not implying that this is the example uh, in any way, <laughs> but The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey on DVD will have 20 minutes of extra, or on Blu-ray, will have 20 minutes of, of extra footage. Yes, there will be an extended edition with This more is walking. good because, do, do you know what I've heard since day one from people who've read The Hobbit? Too short, yeah. Is that, really? is that, is that they say, uh, really, only three movies from that one book? Right. Clearly, no, bro, right. you need more Why content. Thranduil in the theater release. Well, you're gonna get you're gonna get Thranduil now. So it's that's true. Work. Well, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Let's move on to the summer movie draft. All right, it's a Tom. Fight between Justin and Brian, possibly Sarah Lane for the top spot. It's it's, it's, it's really not. This, this is actually what? What? Why not? It's really not. It's really not. Do you realize for just uh, Justin is ahead right now. He's got about a yes. hundred million on me, and he's uh, got the Smurfs too, left, okay. which is going to make some money. So, so here's the question: you have Despicable Tom. Me too, and Despicable Me too. too, and the World's End. And the I've World's got, End. I've got three movies. So the question is: uh, I think, dude. I mean, look to me. I'm just going to go ahead and call it. I, it looks like I've won this thing. I've just about wrapped it up. To me, the real interesting story is between Justin and Sarah for number two and whether I think, or not. I think, uh, I, think, I think you probably have wrapped it up. I do think that if one of your movies is off, 
Uh, I, 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 I do think that he'll get enough out of the Smurfs too. He might get close to 200 million out of the Smurfs too. That he well, could, yeah. he could put up a front, but it's going to take one of your movies underperforming. If your movies perform as expected, you're in. Yes, correct. And and the big one is it's all about Despicable Me too. Like I've seen, there's so many cross promotional tie-ins. Like I've been seeing this stuff for like six months oh, now. Uh, people the talk minions. About it. I just hear people talking. About it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, I think Despicable Me. Uh, to be honest, like I think we're going to know in what uh, when does it when does Despicable Me come out? Uh, like a couple this weeks. Week? Well, this July third. Yeah, along so with we'll the Lone know, Ranger, I, which is Scott Johnson's movie. In fact, one week from today, I think we could pretty much call number one on this. However, there will be, I think, maybe a three-way fight for number two. Oh, you think Scott's going to get two. into it? Well, I mean, Scott's got Lone Ranger's going to be big, and Red yeah. 2 is yeah, going to be big. Yeah, Lone Ranger's going to be that big, but okay. I mean, we'll see. I'll tell you what, dude. Uh, Johnny Depp does not throw away his likeness on crap franchises. I don't the think important point here for people who don't care about the draft, Despicable Me Too and Lone Ranger coming out this week. Uh, support your local draft. <laughs> support whoever you want to have win. <laughs> Let's talk about what we're watching. What we're watching. What Tom, I, I want you to go first. I want you've been oh. watching an awful lot here. Walk me through all these. I don't know how this happened because I don't feel like I had that much time this week. Uh, but I watched the Avengers on Netflix again. Amazing. Okay, and uh, I love so, it. so this is—is is this yeah. only the second time you've watched it? This is the third time. I saw it in the theater twice. Okay. Um, now, so yes. Now, were you I, as surprised? I don't have anything to add to what you said last week. It, okay. just, it made but, me smile. It was fun. Good. Good, good. I got, I got, I got to, I got to move through this stuff. You, I got a list of a hundred things here. Uh, okay, go. We were going to go see the uh, the uh, Simon Pegg movie um, that was out this week, and uh, we couldn't get a good, a good seat, so we watched Shaun of the Dead instead. On, uh, I think it was on HBO Go actually, uh, and right that on. was fun. Uh, Bridesmaids rented it finally, loved it, hilarious. I, uh, I hear that. I hear it was really good. Defiance, Warehouse 13, True Blood, Dexter, Venture Brothers, uh, Casablanca on Voodoo on my iPad. Nice experience, Voodoo. Well done. It was very enjoyable. Uh, have and you then watched, the thing I, yeah. had, had you watched Casablanca before? Have I watched the movie Casablanca before? Yeah. Yeah, it's my favorite movie. I've watched it a million okay, times. Well, okay, but, but you realize like I've never seen it. I've never seen Casablanca. It's it's a tabula rasa. It's a blank slate on my... Tom, come back. We have to finish the show. You can't walk off in the middle of a show, Tom. That's Tom, this is unprofessional. This is unlike you. I'm sorry. Hey, if you, if you need I'll me to... Walk. If you need a host, I could I could join right, you. J Jason, Jason and I are going to take over the show <laughs> if that's how bad it's gotten with Tom. Wow, I can't believe you just stunk up the place there, Brian. I'm sorry, bro. I didn't mean I didn't mean to to do that. All uh, right, I'll, I'll calm down. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I did want to talk about Under the Dome though, which uh, is the Stephen King show that that came to television on CBS. And is the one that you can watch like a few days later on Amazon Prime. Yep. I thought it was really good. Did you watch it? No, I haven't watched it yet. And in fact, I wanted to check with you because you know how allergic I am. Like it takes one person to say, oh, that's crap. And I'll lose all interest in it. And considering that I was that I was thinking about not reading the book just so I could experience the TV show. And especially with Stephen King's dicey history of, of making, lending his name to a lot of really crappy movies and television shows. I was worried, but if you give me the thumbs up, I'll watch, I'm, I'll I'm hold off the, on the book. I'm giving you the thumbs up. First episode was strong. Uh, okay. I, we'll, we'll see where it goes. I'm not raving like, oh my God, it's one of the best things I've seen on television, but exceeded my expectations, which admittedly were average to low. Uh, okay, so I, I liked it. It kept my interest. I liked it. Right on, man. Let's uh, squeeze in a little feedback before we go. Wait, oh, wait, 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 no, wait. Sorry, I forgot. I forgot. I, forgot. I totally forgot. Brian, what have you been watching? <laughs> well, in, in your defense, we went kind of out of order. Usually I go first. Uh, and, and, and to be honest, there's really not much for me to share. Uh, I did not keep up my end of the bargain for the rubber challenge. I've not taken the rubber challenge. I will do okay. that in honor of the feedback that we got before. Uh, I did watch a short movie called The History of the Aspect Ratio. It's like 20 minutes long. I didn't get all the way Vimeo. through it. I started watching it. It was really good, though. 
it's amazing. It's amazing. And it's like you wouldn't think that that the uh, I, I did not know that the original CinemaScope used three projectors or three, I guess, three uh, cameras and then three projectors to present it in order to get this amazing curved stuff. It's, it's really, really good on Vimeo. Uh, but to be honest, all of my story driven full uh, attention time has been taken up by The Last of Us on the PS3. Uh, I cannot say enough about this story, Tom. I know we don't usually do video games, but The Last of Us, I suspect by the time I'm finished, will be in the top 20% of all stories I have experienced full stop. Ahead of so many movies, ahead of so many television shows, ahead of so many web series, the level of storytelling that they have um uh, the downbeats it's the most believable apocalypse i've ever experienced it's the most um uh it, it, the characters i i trust in and believe the uh they they do a great job of making you understand the uh the pain of the protagonist and the hope embodied in the young girl that's your cargo you're trying to get from point a to point b there it is utterly extraordinary and a lot of fun to uh, uh, to play as well. And it's like again, it's like at some point, to me, the 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 characteristics of a great game. Most games, you sit through the cutscenes so you could get back to the action. Great games, you get through the action and you're rewarded and you're excited to get to the next cutscene. And this is definitely the case for The Last of Us. Can't say enough. Somebody get Brian a video game show for goodness sake. My God. Yeah, one of these days, I I, yeah. I think I'd have a lot to say about video games. <laughs> That's cool. No, I, I've been uh, I've been really avoiding The Last of Us because of how great it's been reviewed. Because I'm like, I need to have time to do this. I can't skimp. I, I want to jump go in. All it's in. got it's yeah. got the best. I don't have time. Opening. I don't have time to jump in right now. So I want to jump I'll in when I have time. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll say this much. I'm playing through the whole game uh, live stream. If uh, Justin.tv slash Scam School Brian, they're archiving the clips at um, BBpedia videos. That's YouTube.com slash BBpedia videos. Uh, they're breaking it into individual segments. Just watch the first 20 minutes of the playthrough. Uh, it's extraordinary. You experience the entire first 20 minutes up to the credit sequence as a peripheral character who's not even in the rest of the game. It's, it's really amazing. All right, uh, we're, we're starting to run a little long, so let's uh, each pick one feedback. Now it's time for feedback with Brian and Tom on Flame Radio, yeah. Because it really is time for feedback. Uh, you go ahead, Brian, which one do you want to read? Uh, I'll tell you what, the first one here, just run, wanted to drop a quick note that I agree with Brian about your discussion you had on your last frame rate uh, about uh, Chase That Dragon, the Man of Steel ad placements. I have found it unusual to see so many different products and companies in Man of Steel. Uh, I thought it was rather interesting to see so many as Sears, Nokia, etc. Funny to see I, uh, Superman fighting in an IHOP. I Googled and found this article video. It's a Bloomberg article that talks about how uh, Man of Steel is the most lucrative product placement movie in history. It made $160 million before a single ticket was sold. Uh, and uh, apparently, yeah, there we go. That's from R. Trenkler. And if you watch the video on there, just go to Bloomberg.com and uh, type in Man, Man of Steel product placements. Uh, they break down not only the stuff that was in the movie, but the advertisements that uh, that were tied into the movie and stuff, I did not realize. Like, I, you know, I'm not saying like I'm super sensitive to it, and then I go nuts whenever I see any kind of product placement. But but apparently, I picked the right movie to notice that on because it is the most lucrative product placement movie in all of history. That's amazing, and I have to say, well done with it because. I never looked at any of that stuff. As I mentioned, it didn't really even stick out to me. But I never looked at that stuff and go, wait a minute, that wouldn't be there. Would there be a Sears? Sure. In that town? Yeah. Of course there yeah. would be. Did, that's did that's you what notice you have that, in that uh, kind of time. Would there be an IHOP? Of course there would be. Did you notice that Superman's mom worked at Sears? Like like if you look, like she's got the Sears logo no, right, up, right on her. On her. That. That's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, Fine. To me, I don't care if it's product placement as long as it doesn't undermine the story. Uh, well, and, and I, clearly it didn't for you. You didn't even notice. Yeah. And even then, like for me, it was it wasn't like it was offensive, and I was and I was annoyed by it. It was just like like I just I just noticed like four or five brand names mentioned, and and I couldn't help but wonder how much they paid for that placement. 
All right, and finally from Sandra, she says, I'm becoming increasingly frustrated with the pricing structure at Vudu and iTunes. If I want to buy a new movie from either service, it'll cost me around 20 bucks. But if I buy the same movie on Blu-ray or DVD, I get not only the disc, but also the digital download, iTunes, and the Vudu copy for around the same price. I really don't want the disc. But I like getting the iTunes Voodoo copy so that I can watch the movie anywhere, anytime I want. I now own so many movies that I've opened the case just once in order to get the code out of the case and then put it on a shelf, taking up space. Do you think iTunes Voodoo will ever decrease their prices? It, is this an example of them doing the same thing as Time Warner, goosing up their DVD Blu-ray sales by saying, hey, you know what? Might as well buy the DVD because same price. I'll tell price. you what. I, and weirdly, I wouldn't even blame them if they do. If there's a dollar value associated with towing the line that everything is fine and DVD sales are as normal as they ever were, then I understand them subsidizing that arrangement, even though it's stupid and requires them to make physical product that nobody likes and, and, and pay to move it across America so somebody can buy a physical thing to feel good about themselves. You know, right now we're in that weird, mushy phase. We're in yeah. a transition, Tom. I don't I see a CD how they can the do other anything else. I bought a CD the other day that was cheaper to buy the CD on Amazon with the digital copy included. In other words, I bought the CD on Amazon, got the MP3s right away, and then the CD was mailed to me. It was $2 cheaper to do that than to buy the MP3 album. I, I, it, I, it's just, I don't it's just even... a weird economics going on right now. To, and to be honest, this is these are the artifacts of a market that is seeing an earthquake run through it. So... Yep. It's good that we see weird crap like this because it means big changes are on the way. And Sandra, eventually prices will stabilize. Will they go up? Will they go down? It's hard to say because of inflation and how much is the digital download going to be in demand, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but, but yeah, this, this will not last. Uh, eventually, we'll just have the digital downloads probably in most cases and maybe some special editions with discs. And these prices will, I think they'll be cheaper than discs uh, a little bit. Because there will be some competition out there. But, but yeah, this is, this is a weird temporary situation. Well, that is it for this edition of Frame Rate, Brian Brushwood. How, how, did, you, how did you like the interrupt? Felt edition? good. Felt yeah. good. I liked the ability to interrupt you at any time I felt. And I actually did notice a couple of times that you weren't able to hear me So for the ducking. So maybe next week you'll, you'll do the double Skype extravaganza. And then we'll I, I, be, I, be nothing I, but I constant noticed, interruption. I never noticed that I wasn't able to hear you. Well, yes, because you didn't hear me. That's the whole point. That's wait. You said something, I and I just, just ignored it. Yeah, like I was, I was, and you kept going because you didn't hear. That's that's the whole. Or did I just the whole keep point going. of what we're trying to rest yeah. in peace, Jim Kelly? Right. You were Good truly point. black belt we'll Jones. Foot.tv slash FR. You can find us live on Mondays at 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific, and always on demand at twit.tv slash FR. Email us, framerate at twit.tv. We love to read your emails, especially if you're taking the chicken challenge. It pays to cancel. Yeah. Send in your letters. <laughs>